We're joined by Sajan Goel. He's an international security expert with the Asia Pacific Foundation, and we've reached him in London today. Thanks for joining us to talk about this. Um, first off, let's get your reaction to what unfolded today. Well, it's an important development. It's part of an ongoing process by the Belgian authorities to dismantle any terrorist cell belonging to ISIS inside the country. Memories are still fresh from the Brussels attacks, and Belgium took a lot of heat for not doing enough to try and stop that from taking place. Now they are being more assertive and going on intelligence. They are carrying out various operations that are designed to preempt a potential plot from being uh, orchestrated. So, according to prosecutors, 40 people were questioned, but only 12 arrests. What does this tell you? It's not unusual. During a major counterterrorism raid, a lot of people are gathered up. They're questioned. If there's not enough intelligence to formally charge them, they're then released. The main goal is to identify the individuals that were perhaps uh, the key facilitators in the plot, the organizers, the ones that were doing the reconnaissance, the planning. So it's something that uh, is going to happen again. This is not a one-off counterterrorism operation. I would not be surprised if we see more in the coming weeks. So you think we're going to see more in the coming weeks. Why is this? Well, there is this growing concern that as ISIS uh, is losing territory, its landmass is contracting, they are sending out messages to their followers via encrypted uh, programs like Telegram to carry out attacks wherever they are, because the route uh, for the foreign fighters from North America and Europe to uh, Syria is being cut off. So they want to now try and react in a more aggressive way, like a caged rat, carry out attacks wherever they are. Just recently, we saw the incidents in Orlando and in France, uh, where a police chief and his partner were killed. Not related events, and those individuals had never traveled to uh, Iraq and Syria, but they were motivated by the ideology. So we will see more of those types of plots potentially uh, being orchestrated, and that is why we will see also more counterterrorism operations. So the Euro 2016 soccer tournament is taking place in neighboring France. Uh, what do you think authorities will be focusing on now? The problems in Belgium are very often intrinsically tied to uh, France and vice versa. The Paris attacks, there was always a Belgian component uh, to those attacks. And equally, the Brussels attacks, there was a connection to France. So the French authorities and the Belgians have been working closer together, sharing intelligence, cooperating more. Uh, and the worry has been for a while that Euro 2016 soccer championships could be targeted by terrorists. Mohamed Abrini, one of the plotters behind both the Paris and Brussels attacks, revealed to investigators that they wanted to target Euro 2016 and the fan zones, uh, which are often seen as the the weak link in the security apparatus, because those are open uh, air events. Uh, you can often have up to 90,000 people. They're harder to protect as opposed to a stadium. So we will see more uh, security on the streets, transportation hubs, stadiums, and fan zones. And I just want to ask you one question, because you're talking about the fact that ISIS is losing ground. Talk a little bit about Iraq and what's happening there. The prime minister has declared a victory over ISIS in the war-torn city of Fallujah. How significant is this? Well, Fallujah falling is very significant. This has been one of the strongholds for uh, ISIS. Uh, keep in mind that ever since the uh, occupation of Iraq took place in 2003, Fallujah has always been in the hands of extremists back and forth with the Iraqi government. It's like a pendulum that swings. Fortunately, now it looks like the city has been liberated, but that doesn't mean it's the end of ISIS. It does mean, though, that the operations will probably proceed to Mosul in Iraq and then potentially to the headquarters of ISIS in uh, neighboring Syria, in Raqqa. But as I was mentioning earlier, the more territory ISIS loses, the more likely they will encourage their followers to carry out attacks in the West. I want to thank you for your time today. My pleasure. International security expert Sajan Gohal speaking to us from London.